St. Charles, St. Clemens. Here we go. How did we discover this? We've been exploring a lot we, of yeah. abandoned places. Uh, he told me, like, no, this is where nuns lived. We were just back there, and there was, like, a basement, and it was really creepy. Coming up here, there's lots of legends and stories of uh, things that might have gone on. A lot of ghost stories and urban, urban legends. legends. One priest that went crazy and killed everyone and the satanic cults and everything. I want to be on that altar and I do not want to stand on the steps of that altar. Looking at it, I was definitely drawn to it. Like, I saw it on... Like, they have rituals here for sure. Is this where they made sacrifices? No, it was a Catholic church. Demonic. People definitely have their cult meetings here for sure. Definitely a spooky place. St. Mary's College used to be a religious place. I, I don't believe in the supernatural, but it... it it has has a, like a little bit of a feeling to me. Look, look, right up there. My name is Ellen Flynn Giles. I'm the president of the Howard County Historical Society. The, the town was originally founded as Ellicott Mills um, by the Ellicott brothers who were from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Ellicott City is the site of the first railroad station in America. The seminary um, was built in 1868 and it was originally called Mount Clement. They changed the name to St. Mary's College in 1882. educational requirements for the seminarians was pretty uh, extensive. They had to complete high school, they had to do essentially a junior college two-year uh, stint, then they had to serve a novitiate, and then they served for six more years um, of study of philosophy and theology and such before they could be ordained well, into the order. So these were highly educated young men who were brought here to study and, and to train. change in transportation modes in terms of what people could get to and what they depended on for transportation made a difference in uh, whether uh, a particular area was a place to go or a place that was out of the way. What happened with the Ilchester area where um, St. Mary's was, it became something that was not no longer connected to an active town and a thriving community. So I think that had an impact on them looking at moving their operations elsewhere. By uh, 1972, they um, essentially closed it. They only had 10 um, members of their graduating class. And so um, sort of the history of the, the, this order in this area came to an end, and many of their operations were moved to New York. And so that marked kind of the end of the official use of St. Mary's College in Howard County. In 1982, uh, the land, uh, which was I think about 107 acres all total, um, was acquired by a developer with an idea to build apartments. And as happens with many things in, in development, um, it didn't actually come to fruition. After that approval had failed, um, the property was pretty much abandoned and um, it was vandalized and fell into more than disrepair. It, it actually was falling apart. You know, my recollection is the property was known for trespassers, people going in to see it even back in the day and probably more today. Look at all this shit, man. This is in Brands. I can't help it. In 1997, on a fateful Halloween night, the site burned to the ground. Because it was abandoned, the odds of it starting by itself, like an electrical short, pretty slim. Somebody probably did something, but I have no idea. It's off the beaten path. Not a whole lot of people probably even knew that it was burning when we got there. It was abandoned and there was a huge amount of fire in the building. 
we were there probably if it's since it started about five ish something like that in the morning we were probably there all day there's a certain amount of risk for a building that's been previously damaged or is deteriorated so one of the early decisions we had to make is are we going to fight the fire very early on the decision was made not to fight it I can tell you that's, that's the biggest fire that I have ever been in in 40 years that I was in, that I've been in Howard County and 30 years that I was in Baltimore County. And that marked the end officially of the life of the St. Mary's College in Howard County, Maryland. Um, by 2006, the site was actually bulldozed so that it was no longer a danger or an attractive nuisance where things might happen that were untoward. There's something about something that was destroyed in a dramatic way that has mystery attached to it. Like, was it deliberate? Did it happen? Was it the, the gods? I mean, what happened that caused this fire that destroyed this building? So I think that's one of the reasons why people still are interested in the site and continue to come back and visit it because they hope to be able to answer those questions. What's it out there? <gasps> Does it open up? Yes. This is sketchy. Well, come on, hurry up, let's go. <laughs> I mean, if that did collapse, though, it'd be fine because we could just get out too. I, I think ruins appeal to people even if there's only bits and pieces of them and certainly something that um, was as dramatic had as dramatic an end as being burned to the ground on Halloween does appeal to um, those who are looking for something that might have a little bit of eeriness or a touch of the macabre or just something that's just not what you usually see. My friends had always dared me to go up the stairs Finally, one time I did, and it was the creepiest thing I had ever done in my life. We had to climb over some rock walls or, or some, um, some wooden fencing to even get near there. But once you got in there, it was actually really, really peaceful up there. People always think there's something they're going to find if they, if they visit a site that has a mystery surrounding it or questions still to be answered. We don't like mysteries, we like to solve them, but then I'm not sure that we're always content with that answer. We still want to find another answer. And so you look for things that will tell you something you don't know and that will take you down another route and pose another, uh, another way to look at things. Everything has its own story to tell and everybody makes a story based on their own experiences and their perceptions and the, what is reality to them. After we made it back to the college right here, every, all, every noise we heard just stopped completely as soon as we saw and stepped into the circle where the college was. It's just really, really crazy. I think what we find in history that, as William Faulkner said, the past is never dead. In fact, it's not even past. Because as we look back again, we find new things. We discover something else that tells another story. And every time we do that, it continues to live and grow. And there's always something to find.